Minnesota. Um, and I'm talking about role-based ACL, which is ACL but with an extra twist. And that's what my talk's going to cover a lot of that. Um, what I've been doing a lot in the past was working with clients building websites. But I'm shifting my emphasis more this year, giving up some client work to develop some <coughs> extensions. Um, with this particular, it's something called the IQ project, which is focusing more on the way the end user uses our CMS, or Joomla in particular. And quite often our model is we have the same CMS, uh, the way everything works for both those who build the website and those who manage the website. And my argument or case is we really should separate it and have an interface up to the CMS for those who build it based upon the things they need to do to build a website and have a more simpler and more personalized uh, interface for those who manage the website. So we have at least two different types of users and actually in some cases we have many users that each one should have their own personalized view that's made for non-technical people, um, which means maybe thinking about new techniques, uh, new tools, and things like that. And that all comes down, it st I started getting into ACL because I'm thinking, well, how do we understand different users? And so I started working code-wise. Okay, how do I fit belong to this group to do this and that? And I was two years ago at JAB, I was showing some examples of that. And somebody came up to me later, yeah, that's great, but I really don't want to work with code. I want things installable. You can just install and it works for some of the things to do. So that's a lot of the work that I'm going with. So today I'm going to be talking about the ACL and the concept of role base. In other words, how can we identify um, the different users and their needs and personalize their experience with the CMS or with Joomla uh, based upon the roles that we give them. Uh, so I'll first I want to talk about the architecture of the ACL and how it works. And this is a present, this is an architecture I put together for my own research. So you maybe you've never, unless you've been in my presentation, you've never seen this before. Um, I will go to a larger one. No, no, oh. the larger is the the um, that, that's the way his, that's his. This is mine. He, that's, they're recording this. We're so, 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 so I'm going to talk about the architecture, and then people want to know about permissions. They get confused. And I'm going to try to give a pretty simple formula on how permissions are calculated. Um, then I will talk more about role-based, the model of role-based and that not just the ACL, but what is role-based and how that fits into the Joomla ACL. I'll t give some examples of what personalization we can do by understanding the various roles. Then I will show how to configure ACL uh, to manage these uh, different personalizations. And lastly, I got a few tools I put together that will be out very shortly that I'll just kind of show what they can do and um, give, you, you know, give you access to them. So first is the ACL mechanics. So when I flew into Fil Frankfurt, <coughs> fortunately somebody came and drove me here. I'm, I'm glad I didn't want to have to drive. Especially, well, this is the, the you guys drive on the right side of the road. You go to England, I don't want to drive on the wrong side because I'll be driving the wrong side. Um, but, it, but somebody drove me here, but if I came myself and I just got pictures of Frankfurt trying to find my way here, that doesn't work. I really need to see a map of how the streets are laid out, and then I get a good abstract concept of how it works. And I think the same thing for understanding the ACL give ourselves a map of how things work. So I want to talk, we have the groups, we have access levels, and we have permissions. And then it ties into other things like the users assigning groups and the components assigning permissions and things like that. So I want to just break down how all of that works. And I start out with groups. It's a very foundational part of the ACL. No, it doesn't know about anything else in the ACL or in Joomla but everything else in the ACL and in Joomla knows about it. All the arrows point to it. And it's a very simple uh, group. It's a very simple node. It has a name, and it knows who its parent is. That's all it knows. It doesn't know its siblings. It doesn't know its children. And so we can use that to create a network of groups, which is really a pretty powerful way of saying, here are the roles, and here are the, the way the roles are related. But it's very simple. Then the users tie in. They, the only way they really tie in the ACL is they have a place where you can check the groups. So for however groups I've got, you've got a checklist, and you say it belongs this one, this one, that one, but not that. And each user can belong to one or, or more, and that's how the users are tied into the group. Then we go to what I call the resources. It's my own term, but that includes the things like the components, the modules, the menu items, and the plugins, and actually the site uh, system configuration. When we go to permissions, permissions are only on part of the resources. 
It used to be they were only on components. I think the Sonder, we now have them on the modules. Um, so the modules can offer permissions. And then the site has its own uh, configuration. But you don't have permissions on the menu items nor on the plugins. So just keep in mind that that's it. Also realize that permissions belong, uh, are mostly maintained, uh, while, while the states are maintained by the ACL, the permissions are specific to each component or to, to the particular module. Um, they really exist outside of the ACL. And once, I mean, ACL doesn't have full control. It's at the uh, mercy of the extension builder to put in uh, the permissions and implement the permissions correctly. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but real, and then the permissions map, whatever the groups are, you've got a set of per actions and permissions for each uh, one that match. You create a new group, you get a new little node there, and another copy of permissions, uh, allow, deny, that sort of thing for each one. And so the components grab that from the ACL. Um, and then we have access levels. And access levels, all the all of the resources, except of course site configuration, all of those use access levels. They all know about it, and they declare one and only one. They can't declare multiple, they can't declare none. They have to declare something. Public is usually the default, because that means everybody has access to it. Um, so what, that's what everybody knows about the access levels, and the access levels, all they know about are the groups. And they, they have also a little mapping of the same configuration um, of the groups. So if I add one here, they, you know, they know what the extra group has been added. And all they are is a checklist that this group belongs to this access level. I don't like the term access level because it inf infers levels. And there really is no such concept of levels. Uh, you can make it, but really access levels imposes no concept of levels. As a matter of fact, when you want to check I an access level or create one, you give it a name and you say, these are the different groups and these are the ones that are included. So basically, an access level says this is a list of the different groups. And if you think that the people are associated, users are associated with a group, it's really saying these are the different users who are included in this access level. It's really an access list. And you also might notice recently they've called it view access levels because most people think of it in the terms of viewing, like through a web, um, there's a component on the page, do they have access to view it? But really, it's not explicitly tied to viewing. Plugins have access levels, and they have nothing to do with viewing. Categories, where you can have a module of categories, categories themselves have nothing to do with, uh, with viewing. It's really all about access, and it's not about levels. It's only a list. So an access is just basically saying, the anybody who belongs to any of my groups, yes, they have access. Anybody else, no access. So that's really an access level is rather simple. So this is the whole model, and I'm trying to give an idea of the dependencies. Everything starts with a group. Permissions are, are mapping, you know, the component knows what kind of permissions it wants, what kind of actions it wants to give permissions, <coughs> and has one for each of the groups, and it gets all that information from the ACL, but it kind of resides outside of the ACL's control. And then access levels. Everything needs to have an access level, whether or not one has access. Okay, the ACL is really a coin with two sides, or multiple sides. We think of the ACL a lot in terms of permissions. It also is segmentation or of users, which we can think of in terms of personalization. And I'll talk about personalization a little bit later, but for now, I want to talk about permissions, because a lot of people get confused of how permissions are set up. Uh, this is obviously the typical uh, permission screen. Um, and I mentioned components will have a mapping of each of the groups, and this set for each one of the groups it particularly has. Now, there's three things. Um, that a component is responsible for that's outside of ACL cannot impose upon it, uh, on, a, on a component, on, on components or modules sort of thing. And the first one is the, um, the type of actions that a component is going to allow. We have the core actions, which is can you configure this component? Do you have access to the administrative interface, like the user manager, um, that sort of thing, the managers, menu managers? Uh, and can you create, delete, edit, edit state, edit own? Those are the typical core ones. But you could have a lot more. For instance, ease, yes? Okay. Was it recording before?
Okay, thank you. So, Easy Blog, they, they don't just stick with these, they've got a whole list like manage bloggers, manage settings, manage auto posting. Man I mean, it's a very rich set of actions that they feel are relevant for their component. And each component is separate and uh, has its own way it's being used, and we can't always anticipate it. So it's up to the component to determine which actions it wants to uh, repre um, honor as for far as permission. And so whatever it comes up for its set of actions, that's what we get a set of permission settings for each group on that particular component. The second thing the component is responsible for is actually offering permissions, either on the component level or can it can be as rich as offering on the category level and on the object level. By object level, like the particular article, a particular contact, a banner, or a particular whatever thing it is that they're saving. And uh, you can't force it from the outside. What we hope that those people who are building extensions build a very rich ACL for the you know, um, experience. So they have not just the components, but if they have categories, they offer category level permissions. You can't <coughs> impose it, but it's up to them to do it. That's the first, so they, the actions and how many different areas they put in their um, components. And the third thing that's responsibility of the extension developer is whether or not, how well they um, implement the results of the permissions. So we might say a person has the right to edit the form or create or delete, but you know what? It's the component that has to enforce that in the code, in the model or the view or wherever it is. Um, they have to impose it, and so the ACL can't force the components at that level. They might be able to enforce whether or not you have access to get into the configuration screen, but you go anything deeper than that, it's the responsibility of each component. So you find different components implement ACL at different levels, how richly they implement it is a variable. Um, and uh, it's great when they actually have something rich like, say, Easy Block, for instance. So the list of actions, you know, what level do they offer um, permissions, and then how well do they actually implement the enforcement of those permissions. So how, how do we calculate the results of permissions? And people get confused about a lot of this. So there's really, there's again, there's the three things, three criteria I, I like to mention. One, if we have to focus on an action. Let's, so when you're gonna say, do they have permission, the first thing you say, well, for what component and what action? So edit, create, whatever, and that's independent of all the other ones. The second thing is we have to look at the user's group, that combination. So a user belongs to, let's say in this case, B1 and C. Because they belong to B1, they also belong to B due to inheritance. And so in this case, we look at the component has sets of permissions that we can set for these different groups. And for this particular user, we're only going to evaluate the allow, deny, or inherit for B1, for B, and for C, those particular ones. If it belongs to a different configuration, we look at the ones they belong to. P very um, parallel mapping there. And then we use a really simple formula. We sometimes make it really complicated. Basically, if you just say it's all inherited and you have nothing else and all of, I don't care if it's one or 25 or how many different groups we're looking at, if, they're all, if uh, all of them are inherited by uh, default, we say deny. We're not gonna give you permission unless you really say allow. All you need is one allow. It doesn't matter if it's one allow, five allows, all of them allowed. Um, it doesn't matter the order they're in, it doesn't matter where. You just find an allow in there, it is allowed, except if you have a deny, a, an explicit deny. If you have a deny, it is denied. It doesn't matter if you have an allow, the deny wins. It doesn't matter if the deny sh appears somewhere earlier in the calculations and then you have an allow, the deny wins. So if you have one group saying deny and the other groups are supposed to allow it, hey, it doesn't work. I mean, you can't allow it anymore, it's already denied. The only exception is if somebody's a super admin, you can't deny them permissions that they've naturally have as a super admin. Uh, but aside from that, one deny is all it takes. And so I think a very good rule of practice is never um, used. I have used it in one project in a very extreme case, in very ex extreme things, only because I had to. It was just g working way around it. If um, working way around logic, if I was going to try to not use it. But if you have a sense that you want to use deny, you're probably approaching the ACL, and a role-based approach at least, incorrectly. Uh, very seldom do you need to use deny. So it's really simple. 
Nothing declared, deny, yes. I just put, I had to put some, some, some number up. And in this example, I actually had three groups. So we're con considering the results of this, this, and this. In this case, but I mean, if I'm, I'm gonna show in the next screen, I'll, there's actually more of them. And I'm just using three to kind of show, does it matter the order, or it does it, you know, you're just somewhere in there. So it's, it's all deny, deny if nothing set. If they get a, one or more allows, it's allowed. But yet, if an explicit deny, it's denied. The third thing we have to look at is say, well, if they do <laughs> offer more than just a component or extension level um, sorts of permissions, they have categories and objects, how do we do with it? Do we figure this and calculate? We can boil it down to the exact same thing. They belong to this, this, these three groups, and these three groups, and these three groups. We could have nine different values across here. And we look, and it's anywhere there is a, deni a hard deny, it's denied. But if there's no denies, and we find at least one allowed, only one, I don't care if it's more, but one, we know it's allowed. If we have no settings at all, it's denied. That's a very simple thing to do, and I think we make it much more complicated than we need to. So we think about the groups the user belongs to for that particular action. We look, if it's a component only, we only have one set of groups. If they've got categories, we've got to consider the category level. If it's an object, we consider it the object level. And that's how it's calculated. Uh, let me show a different picture to kind of give you an idea how it works. Maybe, you know, look kind of looking at it from a different angle. This is a component representing it. Um, this would be a category. You see these categories. And these are the objects. Could be articles within a category within the article manager, the com contents. And if, if everything is set to inherit, nothing in here can be accessed by that particular user. A different user, maybe, but not by this user. If I add a new category, can't use it because it's, by, it's, it's allowed. It's, I mean, it's, it's inherited. And there is anything new groups, it's, it's gonna, there's nothing in there that would make it allowed unless you explicitly say allowed. And um, if I add a new uh, item in any of these things, they're also denied. It's, it, it turns out for a user, but you give permissions on the group. You never give it on the user. And that actually, I will show when we talk to role base, the, the beauty of all that is how easy you can change users to different groups or roles. And exactly. And so the whole ACL only looks at groups. And then it's very simple to, to change users between these different groups. And that's the power of role base. And it mo models what the industry says role base should be. But I will, I will talk a little bit more about that in a few slides. In this case, the, the component says allowed. So it doesn't matter, you know, we have any, I create a new category, I don't have to have any settings on that. It's allowed, any new categories are allowed, any new objects would be allowed because when you look at it all, they're considering the component first, or it doesn't really matter what order, but the component's always considered, and it's allowed. So let's say we do this, we don't make the component allowed, but we have this one category. If I create a new category, all those objects are not allowed because by default, we're, just, we're not declaring it. We're letting the category level say it. If anything is created in here will be allowed because the category says I'm allowed. In this category, we have three items that are allowed. The other items are not. If I create a new item within this category, it will not be allowed unless I explicitly make that item allowed because it's inherited and it's like, well, if you aren't saying anything, we're going to say it's denied. And of course, to add anything here, they'll not, not work. So hopefully this picture gives you an idea. Oops. I must have accidentally deleted. I actually had in here a deny. If you make this category red, anytime I add a new object in there, then that object is going to be denied. And even if I make the, uh, if let's say this category was red and denied, and I try to make these green, they would still be denied because there is somewhere between this container, component, category, and item. Uh, if there's red anywhere in there, it's uh, denied. Uh, sorry, the, the slide must have gotten deleted accidentally. This is. Um, the way I model the role base, and I'm not making, the, um, let me see if I can go ahead, no, I'll get to that later. There was a paper out in the 90, like 95, talking about role based access control. And it was for all computer systems, even before we had the web as, as, as worldwide as it is now. And they talked about different levels, and they say what we have is these things are roles, and the roles are tightly coupled with permissions. So if you belong, if a user belongs to a role, that user has all the permissions bestowed by that role. Um, and the user can belong to more than one role. And what should be 
happen it should be very easy to change a user from one role to another role. Here, you've got this role and this role, and the next day I want to yeah, take that and I'll transfer it to somebody else or I'll remove it, or you have multiple roles. So this should be very easy to change. This takes more of the developers thinking, you know, what's the rules? If you belong to this role, what should you have to do? So you have more of a technical person doing this work, and you have a regular business person that doesn't have to know anything about access control, just say, you know, does this person have rights to edit the newsletter? or to um, check the product uh, inventory in our store, or whatever it is, you give them rules of doing that. And the developer should have this set up. It doesn't change often. You've got those rules there. But then who gets to do that? That should change very quickly. If you look at the way the ACL is set up for Joomla, that's really how it works. It's very easy for any user to tick off which particular roles they belong to, as long as we make each of our groups be equivalent to a role. That means a group only has like one concept of um, product management, uh, newsletter management, uh, maybe the publisher of a magazine or whatever. But whatever roles you've got, whatever permissions you want, you make roles for that. Give them very business type naming conventions. So a person here can see the list of the groups, tick them off, and they don't really know what permissions come with them. We, as the site integrators, have to do our work and understand this and put that together. And a very simple business person can just say they belong to this and this. So as long as we make our groups be the equivalent of a role, it's a role-based group, and we now start having a role-based system, very easy for assigning people. In 1.5, we had a system like this. We had you know, the um, front end, anybody could see it, registered, author, editor, publisher, uh, public backend, uh, manager, uh, administrator, super admin, and you had three access levels. I just showed a lot of things that we have in 2.5 over um, 1.5, and we have, um, we could do a whole lot more. But, and I, let me see if I, yes. Uh, um, we could do an awful lot more with this than we can with that, but yet when we ca came out with 2.5, we set up the groups to parallel what we were used to in the past. And so a lot of people think ACL is used the exact same way. I remember re being in the forums uh, answering questions. I saw somebody else come in, oh, you should only assign a person to one group because that's the way we used to have to do it. And that was the frame of mind. We kind of lead people to think that's the way we should do it. But a role-based approach is going to look different. And we haven't always been giving examples and telling people what you can do if you want a role-based approach. And so, and it looks considerably different. I mean, look, we only had the three access levels, and actually we could be very rich and have a very wide list of access levels. So what does a role-based system look like? Well, we take all the different responsibilities for managing the system, in this case, the Joomla CMS, and we put them in slices. And the slices tend to be non-overlapping. The responsibilities are here, you probably don't have those responsibilities in another slice. So if you want somebody to have the responsibility to edit your product inventory or do um, product fulfillment or manage the particular articles on a blog or whatever, each one might want to be its slice. I mean, you can get too extreme and have too many thin slices, and maybe that's appropriate. So there's an art to it to know how refined we uh, slice these things up. But it's a slice, and all the responsibilities that we offer to the, to the end user is in this pie, but we have slices of the pie. So it looks something like this. They're non-overlapping and they're isolated from each other, typically. Um, and then you can assign a person to more than one role. So we craft out this person has this configuration, another person has a different configuration, and maybe one person has just one slice. Um, you can have two people sharing the same slice or the same role. And when we define our roles, we try to look at the way business does its work, all of its actions. This is supposed to be very abstract. Whatever things that business does, um, we think if, if there's a role that business says, this person is in charge of updating our newsletter or our post and every Monday morning or whatever. Well, maybe that's a role and we make a mapping of that action to this and we give it a nice name that the business people understand. So it's a tip, you know, they say, yes, that person should be updating our newsletter or sending out our newsletter. I'm gonna tick that and say, click the little box and that's what they do. And then, of course, each user can, ha because we have a role-based thing and it's refined, um, you ha each, everybody has a different configuration. They might have the same 
but they can be considerably different. And um, as you can, again, multiple ones, it's very easy to check, very easy to add people and take them away. So what does it buy us? Well, first of all, it buys us security. There's a principle in software and systems about least privileges. Give somebody just what they need, no more. Don't give them more ability to shoot themselves in the foot or to do damage to the company uh, assets or things like that. They only should be able to do this and no more. And we can get extreme and cut it in so many on vacation and nobody else can get at this thing. There's a problem there. Um, but it at least helps us reduce the amount of areas people can get into. With the old system, you ha we're on a totem pole of privileges. And if somebody needed to get at something like this, but they didn't need all the stuff in the middle, well, you had to give them the whole thing. So we can craft out and have better security. The other thing <coughs> is we can give them better usability because we know what roles they have and responsibilities they have. If we take the extra work, we can actually give them a different user interface. It could be something as simple as the, the super admin has full access we normally want, and then the, mo the common the user who typically just updates content only has a few items that they want to click on and do. Uh, and it could be we have several different roles. Anytime they have a different role, this looks a little bit differently. It could be very simple, just a one button is all they, they log in and they just get one button. Let's see hands. Oh, yeah. It's nested because we're, yes, it's nested because we're maintaining the mental model of 1.5 into 2.5. But with 2, I, I dropped some slides for time, but with 2.5, it's very, we can do so much more with 2.5, but we're still thinking of the previous mental model. And a role base then goes to a new model. Instead of having this hierarchy, you've got more of a level thing. Yes, Ronnie. So, so you're simplifying it for them, yeah, but, but so, so are you suggesting that the, the ACL could be tuned better for what your purpose? A lot better for me. Okay. And, and, and there's, there's something, I, this is RBAC1, there's, some R, there's also something called RBAC2, which means they offer things like constraints, meaning if you belong to this, you also have to belong to one of these or whatever. And that's a little more technical. And if we did that, think of how complex, I mean, it's possible somebody could add some more mo some extensions, make the ACL do things more simply. But I guess the point is there's enough people struggling with what we've got. So I mean, I understand what you're saying. You can go deeper with access control than what Joomla has done. But there's a certain point you get so uh, complex, more people don't want to won't touch it. It's a good point. I, I put together a site for somebody that had five languages. And I thought, sure, I, I, got, I won the bid because I could do multi-language with Joomla. And I thought it'd be simple. Well, they had all these modules and, this, and these roles. And it's like it got, I didn't realize how much it really opened. You, you mean if I had 10, mo 10, ro 10 roles and 30 modules, now I multiply those by five, what I have to maintain. So I understand that. And I, I, I'm not the one r developing it in core, but, I'm, but, but uh, it is an issue if you get really complex and we need to find ways to solve that. But I mean, you don't show the user all those sorts of things as you said. Okay, look, I'll, I'll move on because I, I am a little bit short on time. Um, okay, so, so roles come and go. In, in the organization, we have a timeline here and people New people come in, people leave, you want to remove their privileges, we want to <coughs> add privileges, they get new assignments, we want to give them more privileges and transfer because somebody else is taking over this thing. Role base is really simple to change. So it buys us the flexibility for staff to come in. 
It also is ease of comprehension for not business people can say, hey, there's, there's four different people, and what uh, different <coughs> roles does each one have? Just click them off. Now, if we've done our job right as site integrators, um, they will have access to just the parts that they need in the CMS. So setting up a role-based system. Well, let me go back first. Um, role permissions and personalization. I want to talk more about personalization and not as much about permissions. This is the approach I've been taking and trying to promote a bit more is that when you kick off or click off the um, different roles for each one, when they go to they log in, they see a different module. Uh, and it, so somebody here has these different things such as uh, site auditor, they get to see more statistics on the site. Someone here is uh, events manager and testimonials, they only see those two things. So what roles you have, you, you can give them a more personalized view. I developed a site for a county which had 20, well actually about 15 departments and sub-departments, so I had over 20 different departments, and, um, but it was just the one, co one government agency. And for each one, I gave them their own roles, and when they log in, for instance, the auditor would see these particular set of items. And if they went to the home, they have their home page, they have their own pages, they click there, they only see their own pages, they don't see the other department's pages, um, and that sort of thing. So here's an example, they clicked on the pages, and they get, notice that it's already preset to the auditor treasurer department. And if it was the sheriff or the attorney, they'd see only their particular item because I could do it through the uh, ACL. Um, when they go and they want to add uh, PDF files, for instance, they have their own directory structure for that particular department. That means they only can, they can add all they want, they can pollute that directory with all the different PDFs they have. It doesn't affect the other departments. They can't delete another department's sorts of things. They only have access. And the JCE allows us to be able to do that sort of thing based upon a user's group. Here's the uh, sheriffs actually had divisions. They had the probation and the jail, a uh, guy in charge of the jail, and each had their own little areas, and the sheriff can then see them all. And then the webmaster usually has extra things like calendar of events, um, security, several different things that the uh, departments didn't have. But each time the person logs in, based upon the, their roles, they see something different. And this was in 2.5 using uh, Rocket Things Mission Control, which I found to be a really more uh, simpler uh, template and works really well for people. Um, this is Hicka Shop for a, uh, somebody hired me to come in and help them with their Hicka Shop. And this is the way all the fields you get, for instance, uh, by default, but they didn't need them all. So I, this one, I, Hicka Shop didn't allow me to use the tools, but I got just put a little extra code in their templates, and they say if they belong to the staff group, they're only going to see the fields that's relevant for them. And the advantage here is they see only the fields that they need to do, and they know there are no fields there that are irrelevant for them. Here they have to say which ones do I pay attention to and don't. That's a lot of extra thinking. And if they only come in here once every other week, they're going to stumble through it. And this is not an easy system to use. But you say, go here, every, every field has meaning to you and they don't see as many, it's much simpler. Um, sometimes though you have to do this by putting a little bit of code, say in the template, to reduce that. Did I take that, you wanted to take a picture of that? Okay, um, so setting up roles, how do we do this? Well, one of the first things I do, and this is my own approach, is I create a back end access because I'm giving people access to the back end. I can do something with the front end, but I'm gonna show an example of the back end. And the back end access does nothing, but I just set up the permission saying, uh, hit the next screen here, you have the right to add uh, admin login allowed, everything else I leave inherited. So no, but I'm not gonna give them access except they can log into the back end. So now I have all my role-based groups are gonna inherit from back end access and I don't have to worry. They, and if you have belong to one of those roles, you can log into the back end. What you can do, it depends on the other groups you belong to. Role-based implies a one-to-one -one relationship with a role. You have one group for each role. In this case, I make a simple events newsletter store. Let's say a store, actually you have three different roles. You have the one maintaining the products, the names, inventory, that sort of thing. Somebody who's gonna maintain the financial, the payments, and somebody who's gonna maintain order fulfillment. You might then split this off into three different roles. If you don't, I mean, this is more like component to component to component. In some cases, you might have multiple roles going to the same component. So basically you figure out what are the actions they have, what do they need to do, and there's a little art to it and you start learning better as you work with it, but you create 
roles, and typically besides an inheritance in the back end, once in a while there's a need to go ahead and use inheritance beyond it, but it's usually a very flat, at least in my approach, it's much rather flat. Um, because if they belong to one role, I really don't want them to belong into other roles that are role-based. And then you go to the component itself. Remember, it's the component that manages whether or not you are allowed. So you have to go to the components manager. If you go to events, you go to the events uh, component, to the newsletter, you go to the newsletter, and for the store, you go to the store component, and you set the values accordingly only for that role-based group. You don't want to touch all the other groups. If you go to the events, you go to the event group, set the values that you want, same thing for each of these. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. And because I want to have admin modules that people can see if they belong to a role, I create one-to-one -one access levels or access list items. So if I have events, I do the events there. And I tend to, for my own use, I put a tilde in front to keep it separated from blah, like public, registered, and special. So if I have a tilde in front of it, I know it's a role-based access level. It's just my own naming convention, but I find it works a little bit better. But it's a one-to-one -one relationship there. And so then what you do is you create your admin uh, modules, not just a site module, but an admin module. And if you have the right tool, you can create links in there. Or if you have a menu too, you can create those as well. But you assign them with the access level. So the events module is the events access level. The newsletter module with maybe a couple of different links, which is the newsletter, the same with store. And so the only people who see this are those who belong to events because our events access level includes only events. It's that strong one-to-one -one relationship. Ro Role-based group, role-based access level. And the admin is, um, especially the dashboard, is set up very similar to the front end. I don't know if people really pay attention, but you can go to administrator modules. And you notice it's got position depending on the template. See panel, icon, menu, which is again a dashboard one. And the red here represents these. The green represents those, and the blue is uh, up in the menu. And this is for mission control, the slide that I you know I've been doing 2.5. And you just basically um, get quick icons. Rocket Theme came out with some quick icons. You can I have another component that I've developed, or a module component uh, that allows you to create icon things like this. And uh, then you basically create them for that particular role. You assign it the right access level, and it works like I was showing. So you belong to these things, you see these different admin modules which contain the links only for the things that the person needs to have access to. A very important part of role-based things that we don't talk about a lot, but the, the RBAC paper and discussions talk about it, is making sure uh, you have a good plan and person who's going to do the assignment, who is the user manager. Because the whole thing falls apart if you have a, a user manager who doesn't know what he or she is doing or is untrustworthy. Um, you, this is the person who's going to make the assignments and you don't want them to assign people to more privileges than they should have, uh, that sort of thing. One thing that Joomla does lack that I'd like to address sometime when I get the time to code it is um, a way we can have different levels. So a person um, can create, a, you can have a user manager who belongs below the main user manager and they only have certain users that they can manage. They don't see the all users. and But that also means that when they look at groups, there's only certain groups you can give them. And I can't come up with a formula that fits everybody. So the solution has to be a configuration table saying, I'm going to create this category of sub-user manager. And this category, this means they, they have to, they are a user manager this is if they belong to this group and they can only manage these other groups and then have an extended user manager that's going to um, enforce it so that you don't have you only see the users that you have access to and they can only assign what we say they do but if those are business rules imagine like a football team has a coach they have a league with all these different teams and each team has their own person who's going to enter their different players on there well that's be a sub user manager you don't want them talk messing around with um, some other teams players and w so we want to create a user manager group um, that's very important. We don't, we don't think about that, but it's kind of an administrative one. So let me just walk through quickly what you do. You basically create a new group. It's called user manager. It inherits from back end, so of course they can log into the back end. Uh, we create a new access level because I'm going to have some display in front that I want to give access uh, to these links only to the user manager. I just use the tilde but called it user manager. 
the only group I include is user manager, that one-to-one -one relationship. And then I go to the user manager, I have to give them permission, so I go to user manager, and then I click the options and uh, the permissions tab, only the user manager group, I leave the other ones alone, and I make allow whatever they want. I can have a user manager that can only create or can only edit what's been created, or they can't delete, but whatever you want. So you can actually have different types of user managers, they're just gonna be able to do that for all users. Uh, and then I go ahead and save, and I've created my user manager, and when the user manager logs in, if all they are is a user manager, this is all they see in this particular model. They see the icon, it gives them a link, or they have a drop down menu that gives them access to the user manager, and they can go in and they can change set names, reset passwords, um, depending on, you know, they can assign people to the groups, they can set their default time zones, editors, things like that, which is what we might, what might want. SEO could be the same way. I don't know about you, but when I've worked with clients, sometimes they say, we have a guy who does SEO. He wants to get in. I'm not going to give him the keys to everything. I'll craft an SEO role and give them only the th permissions of what they want. And if I can do it really well, I, they can only access the metadata fields on articles instead of the whole. And it depends how much they access they really need. But you, you want to limit them to least privileges kind of a concept. So in order to implement role-based things, we have to, uh, this, is, this is back to my picture I showed earlier, this is us like the site integrators and this is our clients who would need to manage. We want to give them a great user experience, a tailored, personalized user experience. But it's our responsibility because every user and every company and every web project is different. We have to configure it. We need to understand the techniques, uh, develop the skills at this, and we need tools in order to do it. So that's one of the things I'm working on is trying to build tools to help it make it easier. Um, I wrote an article a while back called about the, the client template where we have the admin template and the client template which is simpler than that. And what areas can we personalize? Well, I think the dashboard when you log in can be much simpler and personalized. When we click on a list, we might want a pre-filtered list so they don't see all the items, they only see the items that they have privileges to. And it, if they have privileges to other things but they're only working on one task, um, they don't need to edit the other articles but only certain ones, well, we want to pre-filter it so they only see what's relevant when they click that link over here. The edit screen should be simplified. Don't give them all the fields they don't need. I understand why we have to give them all. You want a powerful system, but can we personalize it so they see only the fields that they need to see? And then we edit the toolbar. You know, a power user might want lots of buttons, and maybe we want to give them that, but the person is pretty uh, new or w they don't really need to do much. Let's maybe bold and, and italics and undo and how much more do we really want to give them? Consider that sort of thing. Or maybe for certain applications, we want to give them more. We want to allow them to insert a table because that application needs it, but the other ones don't. So you tailor it that way. And then the media manager, you know, when they manage media, it'd be nice to be able to say they can only manage media in this directory. Give them their own special one. And they can't affect anybody else. They can't over pollute and affect other people that way. Um, so those are areas we can personalize. So what I've worked with is I've come up with my own client template looks something like well looks like this, and you always everything goes back home of the dashboard. You click the wherever you're at, you can click the dashboard and come back to this, and you see the items they get. In this case, I, this is probably not well labeled, but they get a couple of different groups of uh, icon quick links sort of thing, and I developed a tool that allows you to uh, create the links to different parts of the website and we'll generate these particular things and put them in the right categories and based on what role you have. And this is an example in the back end. When we go to the list here, this is already pre-filtered. And you notice the filters are already preset. And so I created a plugin that when you go in here, you actually have an option to say, turn on the link generator. When you turn on the link generator, this little red box shows up. And it's on every single page in the back end. And if you go there and you, um, you can actually preset your filters and it adds extra parameters or sets parameters in this long length. And when you're done, you say, I want to create a link for it. It knows I have my client link uh, component installed. So it's got a button here. If I have my client menu, where you want to have a simple menu for the clients, it would have another button there. You click that, automatically take, create a, a record for a, this link that will bring you to this page with these filters already preset. Trying to make it as simple as you can. Um, that's very helpful. And it, you, you can change the order and the numbers too, those sorts of things. So anything you set here in the filters, 
and the ordering, uh, you know, you can get it preset. One click of the link, you don't have to tell me, remember to do this, it's already preset for you. And then when you're done doing this in the back end, you just click that, the, this plugin gets disabled and it goes away until you turn it on again if you need it. Um, then there's, uh, I'm working on, I have, it's not quite ready for release, but it, it's proof, it's there. Um, form fields, any form that uses JForm, I actually have, let me pick up the next slide here. I, it is there, I'll show you in a moment. Um, this is maybe the contacts, and w let's say we don't need people to see all these fields. Again, if you have extra fields they don't need, the user has to think, what fields are relevant, what should I do? We want it something boiled down like this, based upon their role. Maybe a different role will add extra fields. So I've come up with um, Form Fields Manager, which will go through and tell you all the different forms that are, how many minutes? Okay, I have, it shows all the different uh, f forms that actually are based on JForm. It comes with all the fields, and you can set things whether they're required or not, whether you want to hide them, whether uh, you can set presets of values, uh, the default values when you log in, and there's a lot more I can add to it later. Um, so that allows you to say for this particular role, we want the person to see the screen this way. And then the edit the toolbar, JTE, allows you to go ahead and configure a simpler toolbar than what we have out of the box. And this is the page that will show up sometime next week showing the different things that I'm telling you about. Um, if you come up to me and give me your business card or email address, I will give you uh, a link so you can go and get a free copy of this eventually because I'm sacrificing my time putting this out. It will be by subscription. But this is a chance if you want to get a copy and play with it. Uh, just give me the information that you're here. And um, I'll when I get it up, hopefully later this week, most of these tools, and when I I'll, you'll be able to get access to all these tools. Link generator, form field sort of thing. Play with it, see how you like it. Um, there you go. So that's role base. <laughs> I hope I've inspired you to look at ACL a little differently and uh, consider doing role base. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.